Here we go. On air. We're on air. No, that I'm about to yeah. give Darren a uh -huh. dare. <laughs> I'm gonna give you a dare in the it looks like your 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 place of your childhood home. This <laughs> it's the it's the same uh it's is the this same where you grew up? same equipment, but not the same location. <laughs> okay, all right, just moved it. I got you. Yeah, oh, yeah. wait a minute, we're in the middle of something here. This is Deep Dive with Daniel. I'm Darren with Arbitrage Trade. And he, of course, is Daniel Hopwood. And uh, this week we are talking about the impact of war on stock markets and national economies. That was actually one of your shorter ones lately. Thank you, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> so if we just look at the title, Impact of War. So maybe that's a current subject because of all the wars that are going on right now. Um you got Ukraine and Russia, you've got the Middle East, and it changes week to week who's going against who there, I think. And uh, lately it's been uh, Iran and, or let's say Iran, don't they? It's Iran and uh, uh, Israel. So what will be the response to attacking the Iron Dome? <laughs> say that in a big doomsday type voice. So we're going to talk about uh, how it has this impact on human, social, and environmental levels. Um, but Daniel, can you give me a brief overview of historical trends and wars with the stock market? Yes. Yeah, so a lot of the historical trends indicate that, you know, we've heard that adage that war is good for the economy. And this is because war is often quite stimulatory. So when a war happens, you know, governments need to buy equipment uh, to fight the war from companies that you know, provide missiles, jets, tanks, and such things. And so with that inque increased revenue, um, it becomes quite stimulatory for different environments, which often helps economies rebound maybe from where they were, which is, you know, the kind of famous example is the U.S. coming out of the Great Depression going into World War II. And then after World War II is over, you know, we had like a 20-year bust or a boom cycle right after. So, so war is good for the winner of the war, not the loser of the war. I, I mean, you know, I think Germany makes great cars. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> they, as far as the European countries go, they're the Japan, most solvent. So they nice, actually yeah. did. Well, Japan, you know, they, they were hurting for a, they did really well yeah. to like the eighties and now they're, yep. they're back. So, you know, yeah, it's, it's yeah. ebbs and flows. So it's just like any stock. It just it depends. You could be looking short term or long term goals as far as yeah. if your economy is going to do well coming out of a war. <laughs> okay. Unless you're just totally decimated. Okay. As long yeah, as then, you know, <laughs> as long as you're hey, saying there's issues. a chance, there's a chance. <laughs> and I would say that's stimulatory too if you're starting from zero, right? There's only up. Well, I'm sure the IMF will find you. Never mind. We're not, that's a whole different one too. We won't talk about that. <laughs> Maybe we'll slip it in. I don't know. So kind of let's break it down to a little bit more detail. So what what kind of things, what kind of things in the U.S. will be stimulated? I think we're already starting to see some of it, uh, but mm -hmm. will go up in the case of a war. Yeah, in the short term, we typically see events in commodities like oil go up, especially with the conflict potentially, you know, more full blown than it already is between Iran and Israel would definitely lead to an increase in oil prices, you know, just by default of them fighting in the Middle East where most of the world's oil is produced and defense stocks because, you know, they need to buy, you know, new missiles for the Iron Dome, uh, not where those, you know, all artillery get bought from, whether it's the U.S. or not, you know, it kind of depends on, you know, who's willing to supply and especially in such a politically charged war. Um, and then it's technology companies. And, you know, we see a lot of kind of technology companies actually crossing over into the defense sector with companies like Palantir or Andrel, which was started by Palmer Lucky, the guy who did Oculus. Um, so those are things that we typically see spike in the short term. Okay. And then, and then you know, of course, you're not going to plan your family vacation to Ukraine right now or, or Russia or mm -hmm. Israel or... <laughs> Really, anywhere in the Middle East, I would think. <laughs> Please, yeah, don't no, I, I don't, I don't want to fly. I don't want to fly near there. So you know, it's <laughs> it's not good for airline stocks, not good for tourism, not good yeah. for travel. Anything right. probably related around consumer product goods aren't going to do too well. People aren't too worried about you know getting an extra box of cereal when they're being bombed in the morning. <laughs> yeah, make sure your rations are deep, 
and ready for anything uh, in case you have to go down to your shelter. Um, so we look at the Ukraine and the Middle East right now. Um, there's there's a lot of complexity to that whole thing, right? I mean, what's gonna what it's gonna affect, what it's not gonna affect, um, prices being affected, of course, by oil. Uh, it just seems like it's 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 a subject of the day in the media. Things change week to week. I mean, when's the last time I've really heard anything about Ukraine? It's it's all been about lately. Is I say other other than us getting them more funding in various bills. Ah, yes. You know, I'm I'm not I'm not too aware of any real progress towards a victory but we're, we're also attaching uh taiwan into our proposed uh oh. congress is proposing taiwan just as a group package which they love to do uh let's include everything that i have interest in <laughs> maybe directly or indirectly. smc <laughs> yes <laughs> yes there was actually the, yeah well that's that's that is a good point though because if a it's rebuilding. Rebuilding actually will bring more money in, of course. Uh, and then you'll rebuild your country. Us over here in the U.S., we don't have to worry about that. But we've already got the whole bill already passed on that. Anyway. And bless you. Thank you. <laughs> I was going to say, what did I, was I that, that bad? You really do... quick. I was like, oh, <laughs> You geez. had to run off camera. Something I said. <laughs> well, if you want to, like, just kind of wrap everything up. Um it's it's the thing about this war versus past wars is it seems it's really closer to the whole world war thing and involving everybody. It's not going it, to, it may not just stay in a regional basis. It's going to attack. It's going to basically affect everybody. So only the strongest I would think will survive in this situation. Yeah. You know, I think it's one of those things where like history doesn't repeat itself, but it often rhymes. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you'll definitely see a roll up of power um, you know, I think what's kind of different about now is that a lot of the different powers involved all have nuclear weapons, right? So that kind of like, in a way, de-escalates things like off the bat, because if one person decides to use it, then we all use it and then we're all done, right? And, you know, people may want world domination, but you can only dominate a world that has living people. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll see. I, I personally think that in the Middle East, you know, you have countries like Saudi Arabia, Qatar that are, you know, really kind of on the come up right now, if you will, and kind of detaching themselves from the oil, but the oil is still very important. And I don't think, you know, they're going to let a country like Iran disrupt, you know, the good thing they got going for them. Um, and they were supposedly a part of the help to block all those missiles that got short, shot towards Israel. That being said, you know, there was a lot of different things that could have been done to stop the Russia Ukraine war, allegedly, right? Um, I don't sit in those back rooms and those weren't done. Um, so, you know, mm -hmm. we'll have to see. I thought one of the more interesting things I found while doing this research is if you actually buy the invasion of a country, you typically are buying the bottom and then it goes up from there. That's typically the, like the threat of war is, you know, mm -hmm. you're, you, they sell on the fear. And then they buy on the invasion and it's just up from there. So, you know, there's your long term uh, play, you know, not never financial let a, advice. Never let a crisis go to waste. I could see this in uh, in Goldman's little whiteboard They're just saying, OK, here's the invasion. We can start making good money right here. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm. This is one of those things where they would have told you, like, well, if you look at the long term trends after an invasion, everything is up. So now is actually a good time to invest instead of pull money out. Yay, so. war. Yay. <laughs> All right, Daniel. <laughs> Thanks for allegedly. your... Uh, allegedly. Yes, allegedly. It's always allegedly. <laughs> Until then you can take the conspiracy theory hat off. Right. All right. Uh, uh, thanks for coming by, Daniel. And I will see you. I think we're going to talk a little bit after the bell today. So not long, much longer from now. Because uh, we do this opposite. Same day. We do Fridays is when this comes out. We do... Or actually, yeah, Fridays. And then we record yep. it on Wednesday. So anyway, the, the magic of video. And I'm so, gonna I'm gonna lose today on the bet. I'm not excited. Hopefully, ah. Royce is gonna <laughs> Royce is gonna win again, isn't he? Uh, no, he's not. <laughs> oh, who you? So got anyway, it. anyway, uh, we're <laughs> hopefully King of the Castle. The King of the Castle. <laughs> if the world's still here, we will see you again next Friday with Daniel. Thanks, Daniel. Sounds good, dude. See you later. <laughs> All right, bye bye.